Hello, Paul Coward here at pcfitness.org.uk. Uh, this video is going to give you a circuit you can do to help you to lose uh, body fat. Um, to answer the questions I get from other people, how do I work on my core? How do I get a six pack? Um, really what people are asking there is, is not how do I work my core, but how can I um, burn up body fat so I can see my abdominal muscles underneath and improve my body composition. Um, it is actually impossible to work on a particular body part in order to lose fat there. It actually takes you uh, 20,000 sit-ups to burn up one pound of body fat. Um, and as I've mentioned before, uh, sit-ups are extremely bad for your back. And in the comments, you'll see links to two websites uh, which explain the mechanics of how your spine and vertebral col column is damaged by sit-ups. Um, and it actually does nothing to help you um, burn fat off your stomach and will probably do more harm than good. So this circuit is 10 exercises um, to be done with a kettlebell uh, or a dumbbell, or you could even do it with a body weight. But the idea is that by using a kettlebell or dumbbell, you're loading up one side of your body, which creates an instability. Um, what then has to happen is your abdominal muscles and your core, as in the back muscles as well, have to work to keep your body stabilized. So in addition to this being a high intensity circuit, for you to burn off body fat, it will also help to address those issues of instability, which will then work the, the deep core muscles um, around your spine and the transverse abdominus, which are the deep lying abdominal muscles. Um, you can work around and play around with different intervals. You could work for 30 seconds, rest for 10. Um, you could work for 40 seconds, rest for 20. It all depends on how much time you've got, your fitness levels, uh, just remember to uh, progressively overload. So in other words, if you start off with 20 seconds work and 20 seconds rest, after a few weeks you'll want to progress to 25 or 30 seconds work with 20 seconds rest. You can even reduce um, rest periods, um, maybe working up to 60 seconds um, work period, 20 seconds rest. So you're gradually increasing the work time and reducing the, uh, the, the time that you actually spend resting between intervals. You can also increase the amount of time that you spend um, on the amount of complete circuits you do. And of course, using a kettlebell or a dumbbell, you can increase the weight um, that you're using as well. So uh, watch the circuit, hope you enjoy, and uh, don't forget to click the like button and share with your friends. Thanks for watching. First exercise in today's circuit is called the goblet squat. Um, you need your kettlebell for this. Uh, it's called a goblet squat because of the position of the hands. They come underneath the kettlebell, hold on to the handles here, which are also known as the horns. Keep the bell close to your chest. Squat down, keeping the knees out by engaging the glutes. Nice and low, down to halfway, so your elbows touch your knees and drive back up again. Okay, one of the um, important points to remember about the squat is that your knees Need to remain behind your toes. So what we need to make sure is that the backside comes out backwards and the knees remain level or behind the knee uh, toes, not out in front here, which can put too much pressure on your toes, on your knees rather. Uh, fold up the waist first and drive your backside backwards as if you're sitting on a chair. The second exercise in the circuit is called a Spider-Man plank. So what you'll do is you'll go down into a press up position and you will lift your left foot up Place it down outside your right hand, back to the press up position, right foot up outside your right hand. You can do this quickly to challenge yourself more, or if you find it difficult, do this one at a time. The third exercise is called a goblet lunge. So we're going to hold the kettlebell in the similar position we did last time, in that goblet position, holding by the horns here, close to your chest. And what you would do is you would step backwards with one leg, left leg back, bend the back knee so it almost touches the ground, and back. You can make this more difficult by stepping across yourself. This is a less stable position. Keep this knee out. Less stable position here will challenge your core more. One station stepping back with the left leg. The next station after your rest, stepping back with the right leg. Down, touch the knee almost to the ground, 
back up to standing or to make it more challenging come across yourself here I'll show you that position from the side what we're doing is we're stepping back make sure you keep this knee behind the toe like we did on the squats so not over here which presses on the knee joint here down to the back knee almost touches the ground back up to here the third exercise is called a Romanian deadlift and we're going to do this combined with a row so taking the kettlebell in your right hand you're going to hinge forward at the hips bringing your left leg behind you when you reach a flat position with your body you're going to row the kettlebell up to your chest and then back down to the ground kneeling backwards here row the kettlebell to your chest if you find this challenging you could just lean forward and put this foot on the floor and then row the kettlebell up and down or you could use this hand to balance on the back of a chair or something that gives you stability showing this exercise from the side we're hinging forward at the hips lifting the leg off the ground over until the body is round about 90 uh, flat to the floor parallel to the ground and row the kettlebell back up next exercise is the Romanian deadlift with our left hand on the kettlebell so we hold the kettlebell in our left hand this time we're putting our weight on our left leg hinging forward at the hip with our right leg going backwards as soon as you reach run about parallel to the ground row the kettlebell up to the waist or the chest and back down again remember if you find this challenging you could lunge backwards keep this foot on the floor hinge forwards and then row the kettlebell backwards and forwards standing up each time or just remain in that backward lunge position and again if you want to use your hand to balance on something that will help you again with stability the next exercise is called a rack squat now what you're going to do is bring the kettlebell back to your right hand and you're going to have the kettlebell in the rack position here the way to get the kettlebell into that rack position is to bring the kettlebell up with your elbow high imagine you're zipping up a coat when you reach this position you shoot the elbow up underneath across your body it's crucial with kettlebells to make sure that your hand or arm moves around the kettlebell the kettlebell will come around rather than your kettlebell swinging over the top and hitting you so zip your coat up when you get to here drive the, the elbow through and the kettlebell will rest in this position here it's called the rack position resting on your bicep and forearm it's much easier to do this uh, clean quickly so as you pick the kettlebell up you drive it up fire the elbow through holding the kettlebell in that rack position squat down again keeping the knees out and driving up head up backside down backside will come down so that you're around about 90 degrees to your thighs around about 90 degrees to the ground this arm can help with balance and drive back up again at the end of that station after you've had your rest you'll then do the same exercise on the other side so what you'll be doing is driving the kettlebell up to the floor elbow high drive the kettlebell up elbow through into the right position squats with the kettlebell in the left the last two stations are called a push press so again you'll clean the back kettlebell to your chest here and then from here you take about half squats so just down to about halfway and then you'll drive the kettlebell up above your head up like so if I come down onto my knees here you'll be able to see the action of my arm we're simply driving the kettlebell upwards into a shoulder press position but we're using our legs to help us you can go into a full squat if you want to make the exercise more challenging but just a half squat there will be fine then you change arms for the next station the last station clean the kettlebell squat full or half drive the kettlebell up so again with this one because you're using one arm it's challenging your body the kettlebell will be trying to pull your body over this way and you have to use your core your spinal muscles deep spinal muscles your abdominal muscles your obliques here to keep your body into that stable position okay so you've seen the exercises uh, I hope they all make sense and you understand how to do them um, if you have any questions uh, you can email me um, the email address is on my website uh, pcfitness.org.uk uh, have a go at the challenge have a go at the, the circuit see how you get on um, like I said at the start it's a circuit which will help you to burn body fat but also it challenges your core um, in ways other than just doing sit-ups which is or, and crunches which is something you may have uh, done before um, don't forget to look at the the two links before to Rick Casalge exercise for injuries .com, and Dr. Stuart McGill who will explain in detail and show you all the dangers associated with doing crunches and sit-ups and why you shouldn't do them 
Um, but this exercise will be, um, this circuit is a lot better for you. It'll help to burn the body fat as well as uh, challenging your core. You could do each exercise for a set period of time. There are plenty of timer apps available on the App Store, free ones. Um, maybe you could start with something like 30 seconds exercise, 30 seconds rest, or 20 seconds exercise, 20 seconds rest. Don't forget to progress. So as you get fitter and as you get used to the exercises and can perform them easier, increase the uh, work time and reduce the rest time. You could also perform the circuit two or three times through um, and enjoy and I hope it helps you out. And don't forget to keep you posted on um, your progress. Um, send me any questions by email and uh, click the like button. Um, if you enjoyed this, um, feel free to share with your friends. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope this is helpful for you.